So welcome to the GoTalkNow webinar on you looking at GoTalkNow as a tool for literacy instead of just an AAC application and in particular um, for alternative access. So we'll start there. I, I completed this class with an OT named Laurel Buell and we've presented it several places. So I um, just wanted to give her a shout out and a thank you for letting me share again in this platform. This ain't your grandma's go talk. I say grandma because I was actually at someone's house the other day and grandma walked in and she was younger than me. So apparently that's it. We, I have completely gone to the other side here. Um, this is go talk and some of you have this, this old one with low tech overlays and things and it's worked really well for your low vision kids that might be putting their hands over those cells or even feeling tactile items that you glued to that. Other than that, um, it's, it's cumbersome and you're using old overlays. So the new one is a dynamic screen and we'll change pages. So I love this quote by Dr. Seuss, the more that you read, the more things you know, the more you learn, the more places you'll go. And I just feel so inspired as we're working through comprehensive literacy for all right now that um, my belief that all kids can learn to read, um, there's data behind that. And so I'm excited to move forward with more and more people with that same belief system. So this is the old stuff, the National Reading Panel. Um, and old, I mean 20 years, but not a lot of this has changed. So phonemic awareness, phonics, fluency, vocabulary, and comprehension were the five identified areas. And um, current research continues to touch on these same five things. It's important that we realize that it's not a, it's not a um, continuum in that you're not doing phonemic awareness and then mastery, and then you're doing phonics. You're not mastering any one thing. You're simultaneously exposing kids to all five of these areas. And um, more and more research is coming out about um, comprehension and that one, if it's relevant and it makes um, personal connections with kids now, then um, in where they are right now, that every part of literacy um, instruction becomes more meaningful. So let's just review a little bit here that phonics and phonemic awareness are the letters, the speech sounds and not the letters. On typical AAC applications, there are now boards where they touch the A and it says ah instead of nothing or instead of saying the letter. And so right off the bat, if you're doing some literacy instruction with kids that have touch chat or um, Nova chat or even accent and unity and all that kind of stuff, there's those phonics keyboards are available. But um, alphabetic principle, letter knowledge, phonemic awareness, onset rhyme, tongue twisters, those kinds of things. So what I'm going to try to do now is pop over to my um, to my Go Talk and show you what that looks like on Go Talk when we're learning about those those things. So I have this set here. If I go into phonemic oh, awareness, awareness. Um, then I have some things that you can do on Go Talk. Stem stretch cheer. So. Your word, stop. Tap your word, stop. Stretch it till it's long. Stop. Spell your word again. S. T. O. P. Tell your word, stop. Say it like a cheer. Stop, 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 stop. Okay, so this is one of the, mm -mm, what happened now? This is one of the videos that we made using Explain Everything, which, in a, which is an application I use often with GoTalk to be, to have a video on, um, within GoTalk related to phonemic awareness. So this is um, 
one option. So if I'm in GoTalk right now, I can do two-step scanning. It could say bitty, it could say clap stamp, it could say tongue twister, it could say bingo, it could say beginning sounds, and then they could pick an activity and either watch or hear or, or participate in the activity. Tongue twisters is, um, again, it's a picture of something, and when they hit the switch, it's going to some high frequency sounds. I'm not sure why. Name bingo. Name bingo. There is a girl with purple hair and Maisie is her name. Yeah, M-A-I-S-Y. M-A-I-S-Y. M-A-I-S-Y and Maisie is her name. Yeah. Okay. So, and beginning, beginning sounds. sounds. So beginning sounds is not a video. Beginning sounds. It is one where they're seeing a picture at the top and they're listening. Uh, no, try again. So when they're doing um, two-step scanning on GoTalk, they're listening, they're going, ah, does cat start, ah? And if they select it, it's saying, no, try again. So auditory preview is the sound the letter makes and the actual selection lets them know if they were accurate or not. But no, try again. If they try C, then I set um, go talk now with an action to say K when they listen. That's the one, and then I set the link. And so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna go into the editor and show you what that means. Um, so we're gonna go into Oh gosh, what's the name of this? <laughs> Just a second. Beginning sounds, okay. I'm gonna go into beginning sounds. And it's not alphabetical order, it's in the order that you create them, which is a little tricky. I, always, I wish that you could. Oh boy. I'm gonna go through all these because it's not named the what I thought it was named and I'm so sorry. Beginning, it's so okay, I call it spelling. So let me just show you. If I go in to change something in GoTalk, I have a, I have a symbol. And my auditory cue could be A, or I can record it to say, ah. That's how I create that phonemic awareness. I'm recording the sound instead of letting it do text-to-speech where it says the letter. And then my action might be, um, might be, no, cat doesn't start with ah. K -k -k cat doesn't start with ah. And I'm allowed to give as much auditory information as I feel like they want or need. When I'm in the button that has the C, I'm going, be, which is the correct answer, I'm going to go into record it and give it the sound. And then I'm going to play my re response. That's right. Cat starts with. So I've given all that information and then it jumps to my next page. So only the correct answer goes, moves to the next page. So that's how I'm creating some phonemic awareness stuff from a field of three letters, and you can do it any way you want that way. Um, I'm going to go, let's see if I can do this. Can I move this out of the way and you guys can still see this sort of? Um, maybe. I don't know if I can move the, here we go. So that's how you can do some of those things. You can do it through video, and I will show explain everything a little bit at the end, just so you know how we made those videos. And um, you can use that creative piece of switch to access to have them listen to the sound and then go, yeah, that's it or that's not it. So even if they're not switch access users, if you set GoTalk to be switch, 
Then they touch it first and hear the sound. They touch it again to make the selection. And that's what they can listen to a buck, a buck, and go, cuh, that's the one, and hit it again, and it goes. So even if your child is not, doesn't require switch access, they still get to preview the, what the, what is that? I know the letter, but I'm not sure what the sound is. So you can, you get to kind of meet that need. Okay, fluency is recognizing the word and text in a rapid and accurately and using phrasing and emphasis in a way that makes what is read sound like spoken language. So fluency um, is something that's very difficult for us to um, determine is how fluent are kids that are nonverbal when they're reading? Are they reading word by word and that's why there is a breakdown in comprehension or do they have a flow in their head? So all we can do is provide models for this. So let me just see if I can do it this way. Um, so in fluency and oral reading, fluency. Um, you can do a shared reading. Shared reading. I have these six books created. Billy Sally. And when, you can just read the book or when you're using switch access silly sally went to town silly sally went to town walking backwards upside down so again you can be touch or you can be switch access and you put the text box around the picture and it allows you to um to create um, a whole bunch of literacy experiences. One, you're pointing out the text versus a picture. You're giving, you're reading it, and they get to hear the fluent language. Silly Sally went to town, walking backwards, upside down. Now, you might be thinking, well, if I'm doing all this, I might as well read the book to the kid. And that's true. You should be reading the books to the kids. But you leave. You do a 30-second, 30 30-minute, 30 30-second, 30 30-minute session with a group, and then you leave for the week, and they need to be going through some of these books on their own. And, being, and, and again, in the, in the current research, it's talking about how independent reading, whatever that is, is is very important so if we don't know yet what their internal voice is doing but independently reading a book can happen on GoTap just like this so how is this done we take a picture of the book and we add a text box okay so um i'm trying to decide what's best for um you guys watching the webinar is is it I think it's easier to just show as I go, because I think if I go back, I'm gonna not have time. So let me do that. Let me, um, so I'm gonna do three fingers down and go into edit mode, and I'm just gonna add a scene page. When you add a scene page, and I have a book right here for this, so just let me flip to the page. I'm just gonna do a little penguin, um, I'm going to do a little penguin book that where the kids always having to yell, wake up little penguin. And so um, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to tap to pick a scene. So I can, ahead of time, I could take a picture of every page of a book, or I can do an internet search for things that are real common, like brown bear, or straight from here, I can take a picture of my book. I can use my photo. I can now I can um, tap here to add a tappable region of the screen. And now I have this box that I can create. Tap on the region to set the action or the auditory cue. Do you see how it's walking me through this? And so I'm going to set the auditory words. And maybe this is going to just say, read the page and that's going to be the auditory cue and if I want it went on my switch and then I can set my action to actually read what the text says oh no don't do this to me now I have something checked okay so what we want to do is record it here we go 
recorded speech. And I'm using recorded speech because I remember if I come back to the literacy part of my PowerPoint, I'm, I'm, I'm focusing on fluency. I don't want the digitized speech because I want them to, to hear the inflection to get the flow. We don't want it word by word. We don't want wake up little penguin. We want to, we want to give actual fluency. Wake up little penguin. I'm going to name my page so I know what I'm doing when I go to find it. And aren't you glad I'm recording this, you guys? Because now and later you can figure that out. Okay, so I'm going to go into player. I'm going to do my little jump man. And I'm going to go to the bottom because remember I told you um, all of the pages are, all the pages are listed in the order in which you created them. And now if I touch it once, read the page. That's my auditory cue. Wake up, little penguin. And then you can have it turn a page as well, meaning you can have it jump to page two of the next book. So they are turning pages, they're getting visual cues of where text are, and they're independently reading. And it's really, really a great way to um, support literacy in that way. Okay. Um, I am, come on. Oh no, I can't move my arrow, you guys, hold on. My iPad got stuck right in front of, I don't know how to advance my, there we go. Okay, so there's four types of vocabulary, listening, speaking, reading, and writing. Okay, and so we want to use these words. Um, it's just a different, we need to think about how are we creating listening, speaking, reading, and writing with vocabulary that's meaningful every day. A lot of times we are speaking around our kids and um, we are listening to the other adults in the room, but we're not listening to the out, we're not always paying attention to speaking directly to the kids, listening for what response they could give, and then providing those reading and writing things every day. And I am gonna, I don't know guys, I might have to <laughs> exit this for a second and try this whole iPad reflector thing again because I've lost where it is. Um, so let me try this one more time. There we go. Hmm. I'm going to, um, I'm going to move through this and then we'll go to the go talk to the, and do go talk to the end so I can talk to you really quickly. So we're going to be using prediction, visualization, connection, question, clarifying, and evaluating. Those are those reading strategies that have been identified through research and continue to show up in current research. And I'm going to show you how we're kind of pulling all those together in some of the activities within GoTalk. Video modeling we've talked about, um, generating not all So literacy improves AAC. This much we know is true, and AAC improves, improves literacy. They go hand in hand. So it's okay if they are on touch chat or LAMP or something on one iPad, and you're using a different iPad with GoTalk because GoTalk is actually your literacy instruction and their AAC application is their voice. And remember that those, those are separate things. It's very challenging to have their voice be on GoTalk and their literacy on GoTalk, and then you're flipping through lots of pages. Um, there's word, one of the reasons why AAC is so helpful with, um, with literacy is because of the word prediction pieces, and you can do a lot of instruction related to 
which one of the words start with the sound, which one, what makes it longer, what, 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 think about the first sound, think about the last sound, is, is it a long word, is it a short word, all those word prediction things come in. So as you're working through literature instruction on GoTalk, you're cueing them on their AAC device and their word prediction features so that they can see how it all goes together. These are the apps I have, I use with GoTalk. So I take pictures and I store them in my camera roll. Those are those two. I use explain anything. And sometimes I use DoodleCast. DoodleCast requires drawing though. And if that's not your jam, don't worry about it. So again, at the end, I'll try to have time to jump on to explain everything. So you can see how I've done some videos. Um, I think that's all I'm going to do. I'm just going to show you, I showed you how to customize a hotspot already in the uh, Wake Up Little Penguin book. Um, I just want to show you a little more about how things are working in GoTalk. So I'm going to stop sharing this. No, I'm not. Oh, I am. Um, I'm going to share my desktop. I'm going to... Um, Try to pull up Reflector again. Sorry, I guess. I'm going to fluency. fluency. I showed you how shared reading is done. Turn the page. Even just having a page on GoTalk where they have to tell you to turn the page makes them participate a little bit. This could be done on a Big Mac or a single message button as well. But if all you have is the GoTalk, you can do single messages as well. Um, Fluency. Recording self-reading. So you can have um, a kiddo record their own reading on a button and then you can go back and listen to it or have each student record one page of a book as you go. Just a minute here. All right, so I just forgot to um, start recording again. <laughs> okay. Um, so let me do this. I started it right when you started. Oh, you did? Good, because I can't find that button right now. Okay, uh, I'm going to go into phonics, phonics real quick, and I'm going to show you a couple of tricks with phonics. Here's a letter knowledge idea. Practice letter knowledge on familiar items. Um, so what I did is I took a screenshot of a normal keyboard, a QWERTY keyboard, and I've made a hotspot on the target letters of the week. Now, you can um, target from a field of three, which is this one, meaning if they touch anywhere on the screen, nothing happens unless they touch the S, the B, or the M. But the, the S says the sound, and when I, when I look, touch it, what I created was it opens up to a word wall. And for this student that I did this for, these are the symbols that they use on their touch chat is they, they have Nova chat, so they have board maker symbols on their AAC. But you can create any pages using screenshots or symbol sticks. You can buy symbol sticks from board maker. You can buy PCS symbols from board maker. So um, you can create your own word walls now. So, now they can just experience when I touch words, I can hear words that start with this sound. So I spy with my little eye. What do you spy? Maybe they spy a smile and you have to act it out. Maybe they do, maybe they spy soup and they act it out. I still put some categories on there, play, actions, describe, those kinds of things. Don't, they don't um, go anywhere. But if somebody were to say eat, I could then pull up their AAC device and say, let's find things that start with S that, that um, are under your eat. Um, so this is one oh, way to do um, letter knowledge. Connect lessons with activities in general education classes. Another way is to take the posters that are in your classrooms and um, take pictures of those so that when 
So this is a zoophonics example, but if you're they're not doing zoophonics, if you're doing something else, it just gives them access to the same opportunities as other kids who are yelling out things, particularly those in general ed classrooms. Phonics. Practice seeing how words go together to make a sentence. Okay. So first of all, I want to tell you the first two examples I just showed you with the keyboard and with the Bubba Bear zoophonics. It was just what I did on Wake Me Up Penguin. I took a picture, I created a hotspot, and I gave it an action. That's all you're doing. And you're instantly making a whole bunch of things that are hanging around the wall or the keyboard accessible. This is within GoTalk. Within GoTalk, I am setting up, this is a book called Quick as a Cricket. That's an, um, it's an action where so you're trying to find, you're trying to match the describer to the type of animal. So there's a lot of vocabulary pieces to this. And so they're, they're learning how to um, put things together. So slow as a snail. Slow as a snail. And they get to see all those words get put in a sentence. I have some different settings, so it disappears once they speak it so that it doesn't fill up. But um, you can create these very simple sentences that um, help show comprehension. So if they were to say slow as a dog, a basset, I think is what's in the book, you might say, really, is your basset tired or sick? And you're back on your AAC trying to figure out how, what makes, how we make sense of the words you chose here. At any time that you think the kids are ready, you remove the pictures and this becomes a literacy only activity very quickly. Um, so I'm gonna go here. Concepts about print. And you, it's worth the money to buy a little bit more, um, a higher level, Using a higher level um, voice. The page cues the child where the active portions are. So again, this one got uh, this one got out of whack. But if you use using those boxes, lets you know. Okay, <laughs> using those boxes let you know um, where the text is and draws the eye to that. Sorry, guys, this got get a little messed up. Um, Phonics. So all these pages are are created to help that. Let me just see about suggestions for word wall items. So um, these are all the different suggestions you can do for word wall. And um, these are from various research pro programs and it, it gives videos to match it. So your kids on the autism spectrum that are really drawn to videos, you might end up using GoTalk for them because they're gonna be more drawn to um, the activity when it's in video form than when it's in live form. Phonics. I think there's one more here. This is an ABC order. Oh, maybe not. This is just an opportunity for them to get a word wall. And I, it sounds like the recordings are not there, but basically they can find the letters that way. And some of our kids need an ABC keyboard more so than a QWERTY. It just kind of depends on how things have been taught. But um, you could have a page like this and every, um, every cell opens to a new page that you've made an A word wall and a B word wall and all that kind of stuff. So um, go, when you, hopefully now that you're seeing all this, you're saying, wow, I forgot this is an AAC app. Because, because it does come blank, you can make this any way you want to make it. Um, let's talk about vocabulary. Teaching vocabulary words. Um, playing with words from a story. So this is a favorite of mine. I like, I like, um, the little old lady who's not afraid of anything and she is coming along and she is, um, um, she meets a pair of shoes and the shoes do think something, right? So the shoes, the shoes go stomp, stomp. 
so I can hear shoes go stomp stomp and then I might have to find shoes. Shoes go stomp stomp. So I can create all those cells and then I have that tag word. But behind her she could hear the. So there's a lot of repetition in the book. There's some basic clothing items. And then there's stomp, stomp, wiggle, wiggle, shake, shake, clap, clap. It gets the whole body going. You could also have stomp, stomp, go into a video that shows kids stomping their feet. So you can create a lot here. It does take time, as you can imagine. So that's why um, I'm excited for you guys to learn about this right now. If there's a chance that you're not going to see kids for 10, 15, 20 weeks, um, you could commit yourself to making, you know, a little activity once a week and have nearly a year's worth of stuff related to literacy on your go talk if you pay for the version if you don't pay for the version you have five pages to play with but you can tell if you had five pages to play with you really could make five different activities that were meaningful to your kids teaching vocabulary words vocabulary this is just one of those things where um, you can do some high contrast sight words. Ear. All you're doing is providing just the text and just the high contrast. Very few apps can allow this much contrast and cells this large. So this is another thing that I find that is really kind of cool about um, setting up things of GoTalk. Comprehension. So this is something I did. You guys know the story Stripes, I hope. If you don't, let Stripes. me just let you know that what happens is um, she is um, different. When she's in around environments, she changes colors to kind of match. So it's, it's a bit of a fit in story. So um, she changes around the people and the things that are being talked about. One of the things that I got inspired to do this one for was um, I was in a class, I think it was at Closing the Gap, and they were talking about how when little kids, we're talking mommy and me toddler library time, they go and the librarian is so good and she's showing the book cover and says, what do we know from the cover? What are our questions about this book? And they get people, they get kids right off the bat. They, they're teaching two-year-olds and three-year-olds how to use the visual supports in books to keep their, to get their minds cranking. And our kids with special needs rarely participate in that. And when they are in library, they're now they're in a room with 20 other, five other kids and they're kind of freaking out and they're over sense they have a lot of sensory and they may not experience all they we know that our kids um with complicated bodies don't get these light literacy type instruction and we don't we don't ask them to analyze and again go back to make predictions and visualize and do those six things i mentioned on reading comprehension so um this is something that i created and i'm just gonna i think i'm gonna seek so um, what's the story about? So I made a I made a um, hot spot there that will make that will link what in. Is story about what is the story about? And then I say, do you think she's learning to ride a bike? Do you think she's sick? Do you think she's friends with a zebra because she's striped, or do you think he is sick? So now there is no wrong answer here. She, they get to pick. She's learning to ride a bike, and you go, okay. I wonder which. I wonder if she fell into a rainbow. And they get to pick she is sick and they get to pick friends with a zebra because she's striped and if they pick he is sick we get to point out you know what this is a girl and so he is sick is there might be someone in the story that's sick but this is not a he so you can don't be afraid to to point out every part of speech even pronouns as we're moving forward this is not too high this is not too much um okay oh hold on i'm gonna go back hopefully i can go back oh boy i need to jump to the first of this of this <laughs> of um silly sally hold on stripes here we go okay how does she get the stripes let's predict how does she get all the stripes so um, again, this could be during, before, or after the book. If she ate apples, then she apples, then she would be 
actually she could be red, green, or yellow. So I'm always providing some situations where there's no wrong answer. If she ate apples, then she would be red. Right? Um, if you don't think that this is enough support, you can create, if she ate apple, strawberry, spent, do you see how all of those pictures have support? So if you don't think that they can handle text only, then create pages that have some, some text and some um, visual support, but not too much. We want them to be guessing as they're going. We want them to be exploring literacy, experiencing literacy, exper assuming that I can, um, I can um, do something that has lots of letters and words on it. I'm smart, I can learn this, I know how to read. Very young children, if you ask them if they can read, a lot of them say yes, because they look at books. Yeah, I can read. Our kids are, don't feel that way. Very rarely do they feel smart. Do they feel like they can read? Do they feel, would they answer that yes? And so we want to, we want to provide them with experiences that make them feel like they can answer that question is, yeah, I read. How does it end? So any, any point in the book. How does it end? She eats lima beans, they put her in the zoo, she washes it off, she turns into a rainbow. So sometimes I like to have this before, and I'm using auditory preview, so they don't have to, they don't have to know how to read this. They're listening, eats bananas, yeah, that's the one I want. Maybe I'm using a, um, a bar graph and I'm saying, okay, Two people picked lima beans. One people put, said they put her in the zoo and five people said rainbows. Zero people thought it could wash off. And I, now I have this graph. And then we read the book and we say, what actually happened? Who guessed right? How many of you think the lima beans now? So, you know, then you change it all around. So the, this can be a big, a big unit, but using the auditory preview piece where they get to have it read to them before they make a selection or even have it read to them when they touch it, and if that's the one they want, they touch it again, it gives, up, gives them all that kind of feedback. They get to listen to the words that match the text that they're looking to as much as often as they want. They control, how many times do I have to hear the speech that matches the words for me to understand what this is? And that's something that's great control for the, these kids that have very little control of their literacy environments. I don't think there's more on that. Comprehension. Feelings. Feelings. So this is another one where I was trying to point out, first of all, linguistically, the difference between he and she, and then visually, can they read he and read she and make a visual? Is it a boy or is it a girl? And again, visualization is something that all good readers do, and we do very little explicit instruction on it, especially with those with complicated bodies. There's an assumption that they're not, that it's going to be too high level, and it's just not true. And again, I can't, I can't speak highly enough about the Comprehensive Literacy for All book. We're doing a book study on that in the fall. Um, once a month, we're doing a section, and then we're doing all these types of tech things that go with them. And um, so don't fear, we're going to have more, more uh, webinars on the tech support that goes around um, teaching literacy throughout the fall. But, um, you know, the, the book is talking about how um, we, when, when, when we are wanting someone, when we know that we have a child that's nonverbal, we are saying, I'm going to say it out loud, you say it in your head. So you take the word she, I say she, you say she in your head, it's a girl. I say he, you say he in your head, it's a boy. So what I have here is, she is sad. She is sad. Oh, maybe I don't, isn't it? He is hungry. Oh, I know what I did. With this one, I'll have flashcards or I'll have something from Bits board where I'm showing a boy that's eating a lot and they're having to look at that picture and match the text to that picture. And so they are, um, 
they're looking at the picture and matching the text and looking at the picture and matching the text. And it's all switch accessible if you want it to be, because that's how GoTalk works. So I don't know if I have more. Here we go. She is sad. She is sad. On this particular GoTalk one, I have take I have created the GoTalk page and took a screenshot. And then I have taken a, pic, a screenshot off bits board of a girl that is angry or mad. And then I put them together in my scene, my visual scene that I showed you how to do earlier. And now I'm popping through. If you touch her, you can have it say she's sad, but I don't give it away. I want them to pick text. He's hungry. She's she is mad. And I can have the right answer linked to the next page, but this is something that I want her to do with me. So I'm just letting that I'm just letting the student sequence through the words and pick the pick a sentence. They start with a capital letter, they end with a period, you pick a sentence and look at you reading. How did you know that? You're so smart. When you don't have too much to fix your support, you can pull all those compliments off because they really are using that text to understand what's happening. So mm -hmm. I've created, you, created you have a these. question in the chat. Okay. Um, someone said, so you can put two pictures into a scene page. You put yes. Two yes. So um, if I go into my editor and I add a page, so I can do add a blank scene page. I can add here. So I could add, um, so I could add my take a photo, right? This is my penguin book still. And then um, I can add another, I can go right back there. And then maybe I'm just gonna add a um, PCS symbol of penguin. Um, Oh, wait. Um, I'm, I'm working through it now because Gotox changed a little. So did you guys see that? It, that's this bottom right one walks you through how to do it. Then you get it where you want and you lock your image. Up from the bottom you lock your image now you can't now you don't that doesn't move around on you whoa whoa there we go tap here to add a tappable so we could make this whole thing say penguin when they touch it penguin because now you're showing them maybe like that's what the penguin looks like in your talker or something then you here you can add your text box. Wake up little penguin. This is also where you then can say jump to a page right here. That's where once they read the text, you can have it jump to the next page. So they're turning pages on their own as well. Um, there's one other thing I want to show you. You can disable something once you put on it. So if it's, if you put a lot of text boxes and it's too much for your user, you can disable a whole bunch of them, but only have the main one going. Um, Oh, they added this feature, go visual. I don't think I know what that is. This is also where you can set to add a video and you would choose a video. So if you've made a video of any kind, if you've got a little typical kid stomping their feet and you want the video of that kid's feet to go under stomp, stomp, any video that's on your iPad can be, can be uploaded here. Um, the only thing I guess I want to be sure you guys see is, um, explain everything because that's where almost hmm. oh wow where is it 
Brenda, it might be that one right there with the E, because when I looked it up, I got that one, even though it said explain EDU, then it said explain everything underneath. Oh, you're right. Thank you for telling me that. They changed this since I looked at it. I'm sorry. So um, they they literally have videos here on, on how you make videos to show tracing, how you make videos for visuals you do all this stuff this particular webinar is not on explain everything but you can do a new project you can get a blank pat tab can get canvas or you can do other files or documents and when you're in here um, it can it will walk you through a lot of things but this is where you're going to record speech to your video at the bottom you can draw pictures you can import photos and you guys remember, so you could have um, a, oh, you can have a text box that says what you want the, the word to be, like when we said stop. And you can make, you know, you can increase the font. Why is that not doing anything? I don't want to get too derailed on um, explain everything because it's a whole other webinar. You can also do a whiteboard where you are um, moving things around. You are writing on the video as you record it and you're saying the words. S T O P, stop, and now you have your video. So play around with that because you can make all kinds of fun things through exploring everything that um, you can import into your GoTalk. I'm going to go ahead and um, stop the video in case there's other questions that people are feeling shy about, if I can get that to pop up. Okay, so um, for the video's sake, I'm going to go ahead and stop it and say, um, you know, roll up your sleeves and open up GoTalk and try to look at it from a different way. And um, I hope this has inspired you to think about things, um, think, some, think about how to include literacy in your GoTalk. Now I've got